Good Saturday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and thank you for coming together with me on social media to get together, communicate with each other a little bit on social media through the Word of God as we go through the thought for the day. Each day, one chapter of the Bible each day, and today is uh, Exodus chapter 31, and as I was going through this chapter of the Bible, verses 12 to 18, towards the end of the chapter, speaks of the Sabbath and i wanted to speak about the sabbath because it often causes a lot of controversy in christian circles and we need to let the bible be the final authority in all matters the word sabbath means rest in genesis chapter 2 verses 2 to 3 we see that when god created the heavens and the earth six days on the seventh day he rested we need to be reminded that today in the New Testament, because now we have the New Testament, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, that the Sabbaths, all these laws and festivals and rituals have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Christ, our Lord and Savior, told us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. The law, the Sabbath, the Sabbath law has been fulfilled now in Christ. He is our rest. We read in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, that we have a rest now, as Hebrews 4, verse 9 tells us. That rest is in Jesus Christ. Christ himself told us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My friends, when you're weary, when you're going through difficult times, physical ailments, emotional distress, where do you go? Do you go to a day, wait till Saturday to rest in the Lord? No, we have a perpetual, continual, ongoing rest, not so much in a day, but now in a person, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The penalty for not keeping the Sabbath was death, as we read in this context in Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 to 18. And today, in the New Testament, as I said, if one does not come to Christ, death reigns over them. We are spiritually dead, as Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 tells us, and Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 reminds us. We're reminded that we are condemned if we don't have Christ. John chapter 3, verse 18 reminds us of that, and a little later on in the chapter of John chapter 3, verse 30 we're told that the wrath of God abides in us. So just as if someone did not keep the Sabbath on the seventh day Sabbath in the Old Testament, they were to be put to death. We too today, if one does not come to the eternal rest that we have in Christ, my friends, we will also face the eternal spiritual death penalty. The Sabbath was kept as a reminder as Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 12 to 15 tells us that the Israelites escaped from Egypt. It was a sign of the exodus from Egypt. And it's a reminder for us too now in the New Testament that we have now in Christ, which is our Sabbath, our rest, escaped from our Egypt, spiritual Egypt, our sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 56 and 57 reminds us sin because of sin, we die, and the sting of, the, of death is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, Christ is our exodus now. He is our escape from the spiritual Egypt that had, that had us in bondage to sin. We were slaves to sin. Just like the Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians physically. As Christ reminds us in John chapter 8, verses 32 to 36, we were slaves to sin until we were set free because of Jesus Christ. As I said before today, so many people fight and argue over the Sabbath, whether it's Saturday or Sunday. I am, for, I am one who believes it doesn't matter which day you worship on as long as you're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said before, it's not so much about a day. You see, you could go to church on Saturday or Sunday, look holy, Put on your Sunday best suit and tie and best dress and sing songs, the loudest voice, 
and you can nod your head as much as you want while the preacher is preaching the sermon. But my friends, God looks at your heart. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 reminds us that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Christ in his earthly ministry, oftentimes, like John chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, reminds us that he wouldn't put his trust in people that were around them because he knew what was in their heart. God sees your heart, my friends. When you go to church, it's not so much about the outward appearance, it's about your motives, your intentions, your will, your desires. Are you surrendered to the Lord? Not just on one day, but Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and throughout the rest of the week. I hope today's devotional, my friends, will be an encouragement and a reminder as we go through these scripture verses to let the word of God speak to us. This is a serious matter because so many people are resting in their religious experiences. Whether it's seven-day Adventist with the Sabbath, for me, growing up as a Roman Catholic, but believing that you got right with God uh, by the things that you do. You see, this is what people fall into the mistake of. They think they're getting saved by their works, observing a day, observing different rituals, as Catholics do, like I grew up, you know, bowing before a, a, a cross and telling a priest your sins and then you light some candles and then you're told that your sins are forgiven. Our sins are not forgiven by what day you worship on or what you do. Our sins are forgiven because of what Jesus Christ did for us. We come to him broken and humble and contrite, pleading for mercy. We read that parable in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14 of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee was a very religious person, probably kept the Sabbath. He probably knew the Torah, the law of God. He probably knew uh, all the things to say, and he probably had a good reputation. And then you had the tax collector. All he said was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Where the Pharisee was, I do this, I do that, I did that. I'm not like this person. And Christ said, the one who pleaded for God's mercy is the one that went home justified in the sight of God. Because as Luke chapter 18, verse 14 reminds us, those that exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves shall be exalted. My friends, I hope today we will learn to come to the word of God, which is Christ. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13 tells us that the word, the name of Christ, the name of Jesus is the word of God. Let us not neglect this word, as Psalm 119, verse 16 tells us. Psalm 119, verses 13 to 16. I, could, I would encourage you to read that little passage of scripture today about not neglecting the word. And that word is Christ. Too many people are neglecting Jesus Christ for religious experiences today. And the Sabbath falls into that trap. We need to have a proper understanding of the word Sabbath. In the Greek and Hebrew means rest. We do not rest in a day, we rest in Christ. In Mark chapter two, verses 23 to 28, we read of the people of that time worried, the religious people about what was going on on the Sabbath. And Christ said that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Man was created in the image of God, my friends. And we need to be reminded that these souls need to be saved and they're not going to be saved simply by observing a day, but bowing their knees before Jesus Christ. And I hope today, my friends, we will stay strong in the Lord. Let the word of God be the final authority, all of scripture. And be careful who you listen to, your preachers and your teachers that you listen to, because they can lead you astray if the final authority is not the Bible. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video. Lord, I pray, Father God, that myself included, you stay away from religious traditions and just follow your word, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. God bless you all.